Hola. Hi. This is Al, your statistics instructor. Let's get to work. In this video, we will talk about another method to estimate parameters of our regression model. The method we will discuss is maximum likelihood. Uh, as usual, it would be a good idea to start our discussion in the context of an example. In this case, you will see it will be an old example. So consider the uh, following data. 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 2, and 5, 4. Remember, you have seen it before. You have seen that data set before, where x, the first coordinate, represents advertising expenditure. And the second coordinate, y, represents sales revenue. Let me remind you that in this case a linear model or regression model uh, between uh, y and x would look like this regression model would be y right okay y i meaning a uh, generic uh, generic observation uh, a generic uh, value for sales revenue and then we are going to have our um, y-intercept, beta, 0 our slope parameter, beta 1 our predictor variable, x plus some uh, random fluctuation represented by epsilon Okay, and uh, where that epsilon, that random fluctuation, uh, is a uh, random variable, right, represents a random variable. This time, right, uh, we are going to be assuming something more about this uh, random variable, right? Uh, this time, we are going to assume that epsilon has a normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma square, okay? So, uh, epsilon i is a random variable normally distributed with uh, expected value mean zero and variance sigma square let me find that sigma there 
Okay. Got it. Uh, notation. The uh, notation will look like this. Remember that uh, people in math and statistics, we are lazy writers. So, this is kind of a shorthand notation for what we just described above. Okay? Okay. Uh, we are also assuming that these guys are independent. Okay? Let me just uh, say that too. We are also assuming independence. Great. Okay. So, next, uh, let me remind you about something that you have uh, seen and done before, right? You have played around with uh, likelihood functions, right? Happy memories from Statistics 260? I hope so. Okay. Likelihood function. So, likelihood function. But before I present you that, let me, before we write down the likelihood function for the observations for the yi's, let me uh, show you what the consequences are of these assumptions that we have here. Okay? So, these assumptions these uh, assumptions about uh, the error terms, meaning the epsilons, right? Imply something about the uh, distribution of y, right? So first, um, since epsilon has a normal distribution and this is a linear combination, right? This is a constant plus a normal random variable, the y, right? Uh, then y, i will be normally distributed as well. You agree? And it's easy to show, right? You have done that in uh, Statistics 256, chances are, and for sure in Statistics 260. You can show that using moment generating functions. Okay, so anyway, so first, uh, since we're assuming that the epsilons are normal, then the yi's will be normal as well. And uh, then, uh, we know that normals have two parameters, the mean and the variance. So the mean of yi will be expected value of yi, expected value of beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus epsilon i, expected value of a sum is sum of expected values, right? Uh, it will be easy to find that the uh, expected value of yi will be just this, right? And then the variance is going to be something similar, but let's let's write it down. So, one implication is that yi uh, has a normal distribution. Has a normal distribution. The other implication, expected value of yi,
will be the expected value of this guy. But the expected value of a sum is the sum of expected values. Our mathematicians, uh, our mathematicians, our uh, mathematician friends would say this in a fancier way. They would say that the uh, expected value is linear. And then what we end up with, right, is the expected value of a constant, the constant itself. This is also given that value uh, of x will be given. This beta 1 is a constant, unknown, but a constant, right? So the expected value is itself, and the expected value of epsilon i is 0. So, expected value of y i equals just beta 0 plus beta 1 x. Make sense? So now we have the uh, mean of our normal distribution. We can do something uh, similar with the uh, variance, right? It would be the variance of uh, yi is the variance of uh, beta 0 plus beta 1x plus epsilon i, right? But the, this is a constant. The variance of a constant is zero, and uh, you know a constant is going to be independent of this guy, so it's going to be just the variance of uh, the epsilons. And by assumption, the variance of uh, the epsilons is sigma square. Make sense? Okay. So, uh, now that we know what the implications are of our assumptions about the error term, about those random fluctuations, about the epsilons, let's find the likelihood function for uh, our sample of y i's. Okay, uh, let me copy and paste this guy. I'm going to need more room here. So we said that um, y i has a normal distribution and we have its mean and its variance. You guys agree? Okay, so we know that the likelihood of a single observation is basically just uh, it's uh, given by its PDF. So what we need is uh, the PDF of a normal with mean beta 0 plus beta 1 x and variance sigma square. So let me write it down for you. Okay, so the likelihood of one single observation, one yi, meaning a generic one, given a x and a beta 0, and beta 1 and 
sequence square will be just this it's, uh, something that you guys have seen before so it's 1 over 2 pi let me find pi here, nice pi sigma square that's uh, that beautiful constant that we have for the uh, PDF of a normal, right? and we have a square root right so let me write it down like this with an exponent of one half okay so and then we have an exponential e uh, e to the power uh, minus 1 over 2 times sigma square, okay? Times, well, this should be in the exponent here. There we are. Let me write it down like this to be super clear that this is affecting this guy. Okay? So we have y i minus uh, the mean, right? and the mean is beta 0 plus beta 1 x so beta 0 plus beta 1 x right oops and then I want that there great and this is squared so this is the exponent right makes sense uh, another notation that you could find would be something like this and uh, so it would be this times and then this meaning e and then we would have a huge uh, exponent here and we would have something like that right okay so same thing okay just notation in case you see it in some textbooks okay so that's the likelihood for a single observation okay now remember that in this case we have five observations okay so here we go likelihood for our sample likelihood likelihood for uh, y1 y2 up to y5 okay so remember that the likelihood for a sample is the joint PDF uh, for that sample right since these guys 
since we're assuming that the epsilons are independent, uh, we're also assuming that the yi's are independent, and then the joint is going to be just the product of the uh, individual PDFs. Remember that from Statistics 256? Okay, so what we're going to have is the product. We're going to have five uh, terms that look like this. Make sense? Now let me use that uh, L notation. Okay, L meaning the likelihood of uh, y1, y2, blah blah blah, up to y5. Given all these guys, x, beta 0, beta 1, and sigma square, is just this. Uh, you know, multiplied by this multiplied another again uh, another time by itself and so on so five times we have the product uh, we have a product with five terms that look like this make sense so let me just write it down like this it would be the product of PDF for the first observation so on dot 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 up to the uh, fifth observation. Make sense? That's just the uh, notation, but we're going to find it explicitly. So what we have to do is multiply uh, this, right? Five uh, times, right? So it's going to be just uh, the only thing that is going to be affected uh, here is the uh, exponent. So what we're going to be ending up with is uh, instead of this exponent being 1 over 2, is going to be 5 over 2. Okay? Now this guy here we have five terms like this so we have an exponential so it's going to be just the uh, sum of these exponents when we do the multiplication so let me copy and paste this guy and uh, note that this is a common factor to all those terms so what we end up with here in the uh, exponent is just the uh, sum of five terms that look like that right so Now let me erase that, okay. So I'm just uh, going to be super uh, specific about the uh, number of terms that we have in that uh, summation, that sum. Make sense? Easy, right? So that's the likelihood. We just multiplied this five times we have y1, y2, y3, so on. We have five terms that look like this. Okay? Okay. Anyway, now, again, let me remind you something that you did back in uh, Statistics 260 when you played around with likelihoods. We know that it's so much easier to uh, deal with uh, log likelihoods than likelihoods right okay so now we are going to uh, find the log likelihood for our sample 
log likelihood okay well just like this okay so let me use uh, the uh, following notation LL to refer to the log likelihood okay So by L, L, what I mean is log, but log as in natural log, okay? I'm going to be uh, super specific here, but in case you see that notation in a, a textbook, uh, in a statistics uh, textbook, when we statisticians write down log, what we mean is natural log, LN. Okay, so just notation in this uh, case for what we're doing, we're going to be using LL to refer to the uh, log likelihood. Okay, okay, so now the log likelihood looks like this. Uh, it's going to be the natural log of this so we have uh, this exponent is going to be uh, 5 over 2 right times the uh, natural log of this quantity here right okay so let me write it down 5 over 2 and then we have uh, ln of uh, this expression here okay and then we have natural log of uh, an exponential so we are left with with just this uh, beautiful expression here make sense so just that Got it? Now, using properties of uh, log, right? Uh, the uh, natural log of a uh, ratio is going to be natural log of the numerator minus natural log of the denominator. So, natural log of uh, 1 is 0, but then we have minus the natural log of this. So what we end up with is just minus a natural log just of uh, uh, 2 pi times sigma square. Make sense? And that's again just using properties of uh, natural log. Uh, okay, uh, this one looks uh, fine, right? Let's just copy and paste this one. So we have uh, our log likelihood, okay? Now, let me remind you what was the ultimate goal of this uh, video. It was finding the parameters beta 0 and beta 1 using maximum likelihood, right? So once we have the uh, log likelihood, because it's easier to uh, maximize the log likelihood than the likelihood itself, and we in the end end up with the maximum likelihood estimator but in an easier fashion we would rather deal with this guy with the log likelihood okay so the next step if you remember is once you have your likelihood or log likelihood is just taking uh, derivatives and in this case we, we, ha we will have to take partial derivatives with respect to beta 0 and beta 1 set them equal to 0 and solve for them. Make sense? Okay. 
So, next step, finding uh, derivatives with respect to beta 0 and beta 1. Okay? Now, let's find partial derivatives with respect to beta 0 and beta 1. Okay, uh, let's do that. However, we have done something like that before. If you have seen uh, the other video where we uh, talked about the uh, least squares method. Anyway, let me remind you. So we need the uh, partial derivative of LL, meaning the log likelihood, with uh, respect to beta 0. Here we are. Okay, so let's find it. Uh, derivative of this term with respect to beta 0 zero, right? And then we have uh, kind of an ugly looking expression but it's not that bad. So it's going to be, hey this is a constant times something. So anyway, this guy, this term has a beta zero in it. So it's going to be a constant times a function. The derivative would be that constant times the derivative of this function. This happens to be a sum, so the sum, uh, the uh, derivative of a sum is the sum of derivatives. So what we have here is just two times this guy, right? And using the chain rule, the derivative of this would be minus one, right? So let me write it down for you. Here we are it's going to be, and I will be a bit lazy to save a little bit of time, and uh, it's going to be minus 2 divided by 2 times uh, sigma square times uh, this almost. Now this guy is gone, right? And uh, what we're going to be uh, having here by the chain rule is a negative 1. Make sense? So let me explain again. So what we have is this is a common factor, no problem, but then we have 2 times this, so I can pull that out, that 2, and then we have the uh, derivative of this, and by the chain rule that's negative 1, right? No problem. So, what we end up with, oops, sorry, This is equivalent to of 
going to simplify this. This will be gone. This will be gone. Right? And then we have uh, minus times minus 1. Well, we have just a 1. Okay? Got it? Yeah? Okay. Now we will uh, set that equation equal to 0. Bear that in mind. Okay? Also, uh, something that you have to remember is that those x's, uh, we have a yi, then we have a particular x for that guy, right? An xi. So we have pairs. Uh, yi goes with uh, its corresponding xi, right? Okay. So we might as well already uh, set it equal to zero. So we're going to have the sum, since we're going to be setting this equal to zero, we could multiply by sigma square, right, on both sides, and that will be gone. So we only have the sum of yi's, right? minus the sum of this guy, right? That's going to be 5 times beta 0, right? So minus 5 times beta 0 uh, and then we also have this minus uh, affecting this guy here, minus uh, summation of beta 1 times xi. Beta 1 is going to be a common factor, so what we're going to have here is beta 1 times sum of um, xi's. that's going to be equal to zero. Okay. Uh, now, uh, if we just uh, move these guys to the other side of the equation uh, and then reflect, right, this is going to be equivalent Two just uh, we are going to have uh, this guy in a slightly different uh, way, right? Just uh, I like having these guys on the left hand side.
See, what I did is just I moved these guys to the right hand side so it would be the sum of yi is equals 5 times beta 0 plus beta 1 times the sum of xi's but then I just uh, reflect that, that's the same as this, right? Oh, we have a 5 here missing. Okay, great. So that would be our first equation, right? Now you remember that we've done something like this before so try and find the derivative with respect to beta 1 right of the log likelihood and you should end up with something like this so doing doing something similar with beta 1 The uh, partial derivative, uh, finding after you find the uh, partial derivative of beta 1 and setting it equal to 0, we're going to obtain the other equation. We obtain another equation. And let me give you the uh, equation that we end up with. Okay. So, and once you do something similar, oh, sorry, to what we did here, the uh, second equation in the end will be just. Um, just change the signs of these guys So that would be our second equation, right? What we did here again is similar to what we did with beta zero. We take the uh, partial derivative with partial derivative with respect to beta one. We set it equal to zero, and then I'm um, just uh, you know uh, leaving beta zero and beta one. Uh, First I move them to the right hand side and then I just reflect so I have them with positive signs and uh, we have the uh, terms that do not involve uh, beta 0 and beta 1 on the right hand side. Okay. The thing is what I wanted you to see is that uh, what we end up with is a system 
of linear equations but a system of linear equations that you have seen before when we discussed the least squares method equations 1 and 2 uh, well they are the normal equations right so let me say that these guys equations 1 and 2 are the normal equations right so anyway what we can do is solve that uh, system of linear equations so let's let's do it let's use r to solve that system of linear equations right So, uh, note, right, let me just write these guys down together so it's easier for us to see what we want to do. That's our equation one. We have our equation two. So we need to uh, define a matrix here. Let me call it uh, A. And then we have uh, the unknown uh, vector, beta 0 and beta 1. And then we have another vector here. Let me call it uh, C. OK, so here we go. So as I said, let's uh, define that matrix um, a. First, n represents our uh, our total number of observations. n will be the uh, length of our uh, vector of observations, right? So first, we need uh, our x's and y's. Okay. So let me remind you what they are. Here they are, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, right? Those are the x's. One, two, three, four, and 5. Then we have the y's are going to be 1, comma, 1, uh, comma 2, comma 2, and 4. Okay? Now let's form that matrix. Okay? The first one is 5, which represents the uh, number of observations that we have. So we can use that function length to find um, that total number of observations. Oops, sorry. better okay five nice so uh, now we need this uh, sum of x i's and let me create an object called sum.x which is going to be the sum of the x's uh, we need this guy here the sum of the x i's squared so let me call it that we just square our x there Okay, so now let's define that matrix A that defines those coefficients that we have on the uh, left-hand side of our system of linear equations. A equals uh, matrix. We use the C command, uh, concatenate, and we need first N. We need the sum of the x's. Uh, remember that R reads uh, vectors by column, right? So we want N, sum of Xi's, then sum of Xi's, and then sum of Xi's square. 
we need the number of rows we want two rows and we want two columns great let's type a to make sure that we have what we want five is this guy sum of x size yeah that seems to make sense okay we're almost there now we need this vector that defines the right hand side of our system of linear equations let's call that guy c but first the uh, first element of that vector is going to be the sum of the yi's so sum y is going to be the sum of our y's uh, and then we need the uh, sum of cross products Let, let's call it sum x uh, dot y okay so sum of x times y and you know that when you do this what you're doing is you're multiplying these two vectors element wise but that's exactly what we want and then we want the sum of those cross products okay good now that guy will be as we said the vector that defines the uh, left hand side of our uh, uh, system of linear equations there okay let's see it okay seems to make sense finally since what we want is to solve that system of linear equations we could do this if we uh, just find the inverse of the matrix A times this vector c we're done so let's do that solve a that's the inverse of a remember that if you want to do the matrix multiplication you have to use uh, that uh, percent sign then star percent times that vector c we just created minus 0.1 comma 0.7 another choice would be doing this solve the system defined by the matrix A on the left hand side and the vector C on the right hand side and it gives you the same thing something that I want you to notice as well is that we ended up with the same solution uh, that we obtained using least squares right so okay we're there let's just summarize let's just recap uh, what we did today okay let's recap okay so uh, we discussed a different method to find the best linear model the method was maximum likelihood what we did is we assumed that the errors had a normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma square okay and that assumption uh, led us to conclude that the uh, maximum maximum likelihood estimates of beta 0 and beta 1 are the same as the least squares estimates cool right so let me just write uh, write that down notice that the maximum likelihood estimates of beta 0 Um, and beta 1 are the same as the least squares 
estimates. Okay, so well, that's it for now. Uh, thank you so much for uh, paying attention to this video. Uh, take care. Keep working hard. See you next time. Bye.